I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You broke my back is broken. What a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. I wish I was 50 years younger and I'd kick your ass. A big shout out to everybody in Riverside. And um, as a kid, I always wanted to meet Don King. But now I think Don King's a fucking asshole. He's a racist. No, 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 no. We're not going down that way. Not bigger than this. Maybe the biggest upset of this decade. Decade. This steel is a fast way to do it. Welcome again to the Mr. Boxing Guru podcast. That is me, Sal, Mr. Boxing Guru, with yet again another episode of, again, the Mr. Boxing Guru podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Again, if you guys are listening on Spotify, uh, Spreaker, wherever you guys are listening to, make sure you guys like, subscribe. If you guys are listening to this on uh, YouTube, make sure you guys hit that follow or whatever, subscribe button, whatever the fuck it's called. But again, thank you guys for listening to this podcast. Um, having done a podcast in about... Uh, what is it about? You know what? I'm, I'm getting a little better. Um, I haven't done a podcast in about uh, two weeks. I think two weeks is, is, is good enough. We haven't had that solid material to where, you know, we need to do a podcast. So, again, big shout out to you guys. And I hope you guys like that intro. Um, my buddy Louis, um, uh, Louis... Uh, uh, did the pot, did the intro for me, um, and I wanted to try something new again. Shout out to Los Anaya. Um, um, you know we need to bring him back, but I wanted to try something new out. So um, again, still big shout out to Los Anaya. Uh, so let's get to it. We had a busy weekend. We had a busy couple of fights. There's a couple of news notes. So make sure, let's make sure we get to them. First things first is David Benavides. David Benavides stops uh, Romer Alexis Angulo. In the tenth round, and again, this fight was for a non uh, non title belt because uh, Benavides not not only loses his belt once again, um, but puts himself in the position to be a three <laughs> a three time weight division champion without losing a fight at the tender age of twenty three years old. Um, Benavides blames the uh, the pandemic. Uh, he was in there in the bubble soon enough to where he could um, sit down and make the weight um, and then you know his body didn't show it and again I'm a big guy so I don't want to really you know knock on the guy because he didn't make weight he was I believe three pounds shy of making that weight he couldn't do it again I get it look the kid's getting shitted on because it's easy to shit on the PVC guy uh, I get that, but we need to stop this shit. You know, at the end of the day, boxing is boxing, and we like boxing. We're like all these other fucking guys, so it doesn't matter. Uh, guy doesn't make weight. Um, I, I I jump on Twitter because all these people started messaging me. What do you think about Benavidez? What do you think about this? I'm like, you know, I, I don't really don't. I really don't care. And the reason why, why I didn't really care because I, I don't think this fight should have been for a belt to begin with. Uh, we let guys like Berchel, you know, go. Do a, 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 I guess a pre, a post pen. Well, I don't even know what the fuck, but pandemic uh, fight, and he was above his weight division. He didn't fight for his belt, so um, I don't think these, especially fights like honestly, like like fighting this guy Angulo. I mean, I think we all had had a a clear understanding of what Angulo brought to the table, which wasn't much, and you saw the size advantage that that Benavides had towards this kid. And you saw that it was pretty, pretty drastic. Um, so there was no, to me, I, I knew the type of fight we were going to get. It, it wasn't the type of fight that I cared to watch live. Um, it was a fight that I eventually got to. And, and, and for for the same reason of, of, of there not being that much action there to begin with. There wasn't much action. Um, again... Just not a, a great fight to be a title fight. Um, so you saw what Benavides did. He kind of toyed with the guy for, 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 you know, as long as it lasted, which was 10 rounds. Then he finally got a stoppage. But that, that, that's all. Uh, am I going to knock the kid for not making weight? No, I'm not going to knock. I'm not gonna, I'm, look, uh, Benavides, is, is, I, it's fun to do it. But it's when it's come down to, to, to be real, I, I'm not going to knock him. 
it is what it is. He didn't make weight. Um, he, look who he was fighting. Uh, Caleb Plank attack all the shit he wants. Again, till they get in the ring, I really don't care. And that, that's that's another thing. I mean, I think we're all kind of monotone to the fucking fights that are going on because there's nothing that really sparks attention. Until until Benavides really... Cause again, this is a prime example. I'm not getting up to really argue about this fight or care that he made, that he made weight because this was in a championship-level fight. This is a fight that I'm okay with a guy being three pounds overweight, three, four, five pounds overweight. I don't care because it's not a championship-level fight. There's no reason to knock Benavides on it. Again, you guys can knock him. I'll knock him, you know, for sake of fucking shits and giggles. But I really don't care to give him shit. Until he fights a real opponent or a championship level opponent, then let's force these, these, these weight classes. What's embarrassing to me is guys like Mauricio Suleiman to jump in saying, oh, this guy just went through all this tragic thing, tragic this. I mean, shut the fuck up, Mauricio Suleiman. All you're going to do is just, you're going to get your sanctioning fee, or you, actually, you're not going to get a sanctioning fee because now you didn't fight for a belt. One of the guys uh, uh, did, but you're not getting shit. Um, but that's what it is. Uh, um, again, Till Benavides fights a, a guy that that's that's uh, to the standards of that belt he carries around his waist or carried again uh, around his waist. Um, I, I really don't care. Um, and then again, I'm pretty monotone when it comes to boxing right now because there's nothing really going on that that lights up the 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 imagination that oh I want to do this. Uh, this is the fight that I'm looking for. There, there are some, but and we'll get to them soon, uh, and, and yeah, we can talk about it a little more. But again, the three, the three pound uh, weight, I, I, I don't care for it. I think they should have been pre agreed that he wasn't going to make weight, and we, I think we could have all made it a better weekend. I think on the undercard was uh, Romero. Um, this was actually, sorry, I hit me there. Uh, this was uh, Romero's uh, interim title that he got in and I know uh Romero Rolando Romero is uh known more for his um uh, I guess his dislike for Ryan Garcia uh he's he was notorious for, for for slapping Ryan Garcia around for a couple of rounds um I think right before they both went pro um so it is what it is um but again Rolando Romero Rollies, as, as most of you guys know, in my opinion, in the opinion of most, he lost the fight. Um, yeah, and, and again, and, and shout out to, to, to the guy he lost to, uh, Jackson Marinas. Um, and, and he, but I think the disgust with most boxing fans is that the way he lost. Because you could have, uh, I had the fight maybe 9 3. Um, Eight to four is really pushing it, but more like nine three. Um, I can see a couple of the round, the rounds going going the other way uh, to Armarinas. Uh, just a simple fact that that he was boxing a bit better. He was slapping, I guess, uh, Romero uh, a bit better, or, or, or it was more like the who would you wish to be in each one of these rounds? And and for the most part, it was. I mean, it, it was Marinas. He was the more precise guy, but at the at the end of the day, Romero was the one that was was hunting him. He was he was, you know, if there was a round in in, in question, I could see why the, the the judges gave it to to Romero. Uh, if you're pressing the fight, you're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get the rounds. You're gonna get the decision. Um, he didn't uh, again. Romero being a um, a, a Mayweather Promotions guy. I mean, it, look, everything everything played the same way as when that Joshua Franco fight happened. Um, I think if it wasn't for, for, for Robert Garcia's loud outburst of not robbing him, that fight, uh, Joshua Franco would have got robbed himself. Um, so... But it's a learning experience, and, and, and the reason why, again, maybe, again, maybe I'm being too too monotone, too pacifist when it comes to this, too, too gives a fuckish about this whole situation. But I get it. He lost. He he. If he would have beaten Rolly, 
yesterday or yesteryear, whatever you guys want us to call it. But today we wouldn't give two fucks or we wouldn't really care. We would have moved on. We wouldn't care who Jackson uh, Marinas is. And what happened with this kid is that now he, he has another opportunity to redeem himself. He thinks he beat Rollies. The public thinks that he beat Rollies. So I think the logical thing or, or what should happen or the public demand, what the public is demanding is for a rematch. And I believe that, you know, from at least from Rowley's uh, point of view, he says, sure, fuck it, why not? Let's let's go again. I, I'm, I'm sure Marinha is going to be up for it now and I'm sure it's going to be for a lot more money. So maybe a loss in your record, sometimes a loss in your record is not, not such a bad idea, especially when you get to redo it again, you, you get to look at the, you guys already fought once. You know the mistakes Rolly makes. And, and and maybe you could beat him convincingly. Now there's going to be more eyes. There's going to be more 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 eyes on this. So, so the judging can't be as fraudulent as, as it was. So maybe, again, and, and this is me just, you know, from the outside. Maybe it's not, a, not such a bad thing. Again, was the decision bad? Yes. Do I understand why they gave it to Rollies? Yes. Um, and that's why sometimes it, it's... It, it pays to be with a good promoter. You notice that these fights always happen with the guy when, when it's always, always when it's the house guy that it happens unless somebody brings some sort of awareness while they're making these uh, or while they're judging these fights. So again, am I mad? Yes. Do I understand? Yes. Am I surprised? Fuck no. Um, and and the problem, the, my, my problem with the decision is everybody jumping at Rollies. I, I get it. It, it. It's not the kid's fault. He did what he had to do, but he did it. He's not the fucking judge. Blame the judges. Blame. I mean, if you want to be conspiracy theorists, blame, blame Floyd. Blame the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Blame, blame other folks. Just not. Don't blame. Uh, don't don't blame the kid. The kid. Look, the kid was with the hot shot promoter. He got. He got. He got what guys with hotshot promoters get. They get, you know, questionable decisions in their favor. To their favor. So, it is what it is. Um, now, the other thing that kind of struck me as odd is everybody jumping on him. Or everybody saying, oh, shit. Or, or especially, you know, uh, like Oscar De La Hoya, which, again, you guys know I love. But I, I'll be honest, I'm going to keep it 100 with this shit. Oscar De La Hoya, I noticed he had a couple of Casa Mexicos, you know, maybe shots in the system because I saw his tweets. They didn't really make sense, but saying that that Rolly sucks dick and or, or whatever the hell he said. Um, and, you know, Team Ryan and Ryan and him going back and forth, blah, blah, blah. I, I guess shit's back to normal now and then, then they're going to start praising each other. But let, don't let, don't knock Rolly. When a guy like Ryan hasn't done shit to fucking begin with, he hasn't beat anybody of note. He hasn't beat anybody uh, uh, of, of, with, of substance, you know. Um, so, so before you we you dismiss or we dismiss a kid like Rolly that's only been fighting for for not even a decade, and that's including the amateur. Um, he's not a bad fighter, and again, I'm not a big fan of Rolly because I don't like the shit talking. I don't. I mean, I don't like his constant, you know, annoyance and and. and about Ryan, but I'm not. I'm not gonna knock this kid either. You know, again, a, a guy that that technically hasn't had that many amateur fights uh, or pros, he's not doing that bad. Pretty good, pretty good, solid kid. Um, now, does he beat Ryan? I don't know, but I, I don't think that they're, they're too far apart from each other. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, let's see. On the zone, we actually had Cecilia Breckus, and uh, she actually goes through her first defeat. And I think it's her first pro loss. Um, that came to Jessica McCaskill. And that was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I think the homie Bethel was out there. And uh, he he was part of the, the crew. Um, I just watched the fight. Um, I watched the fight because I had to watch the fight. Um, do I really care about it? No. Because, yes, you know, the, the uh, Cecilia is, is, is a hell of a... A person, I would say, um, great for women's boxing. She's been fighting for a while, collecting belts. You know, being the undisputed and the, the I guess, the pound for pound uh, best woman in boxing. She held this title for a while, 
for these titles, I guess you could say. Um, but a as a fighter, again, my utmost respect for her, all she's done, but she's never really did, I guess, quote unquote, it for me. You know, she was she never did anything spectacular. Um, and and kind of weird to see her lose her titles this way, where the the, the, the eyes of no one. Uh, but it happens. And, and one thing you do have to give us Cecilia Brick is, is credit um, and how to, and I guess it sounds kind of corny, but how to take your loss like a man, like a real man, like a real human being, I guess you could say. She applauded this this girl, Jessica. She, she congratulated her. Um, and, and she moved on, I think. Uh, from what I got from the interviews is that, you know, she's going to call it a career and, and, and move on. Um, if that if that's true, um, hell of a run, uh, and, and and what of an ambassador for women's boxing, and, you know she's been, uh, and, and you know can't wish her can't do nothing but wish her the best of luck. Uh, we also had Carl Frampton, Michael Conlon, uh, both got stoppages uh, this Saturday, so kudos to them. I think uh, Michael his career is only a. Uh, um, it's getting moved to the point where maybe he could fight for a vacant belt. I don't know who's going to fight for with a for a vacant belt. Uh, but there's a lot of tough guys out there in this division. Of course, Carl Frampton, we all know that he should fight later on this year. And that's going to be with uh, versus uh, Jamel Harry. That's the fight that I'm really, really interested in. Um, so hopefully, you know, everything goes uh, well with Jamel Harry. You know, he's able to... Uh, get rid of his opponent, which I know I think this is going to be the third time the fight uh, gets pushed, or no, the second time it gets pushed. Uh, so third time's a charm. Hopefully, it actually happens because it should happen by the end of is it the end of this month? Yeah, the end of this month. So good for them. Um, another news: the fight that actually gets made, and and, and the, these are the type of fights that that kind of bring life, I guess you could say, to. Uh, to boxing, to me, it put a smile on my face. That these are the type of fights that, again, not just because we have COVID means we're going to get shit fights. It's not fair to the fans. It's not fair to boxing. It's not fair to the fighters. So we get a great fight, and there was a lot of shit going on uh, with negotiations. That's why I hate something. I really hate uh, that information is that open to to a lot of news media reporters because they throw it out there with ill intent to make sure that that. Or, or sort of to push a fighter to take a fight or, again, just let negotiations be negotiations once the fights are made, you know, come back to us and and, and tell us all about it. Um, but Vasily Lomachenko is going to face IBF title holder, that is, Teofimo uh, Lopez. The fight is finally done. It's made. It's going to happen. From my understanding, it's going to be regular-ass ESPN, which is even better. That means I don't have to stream this fight. So this is perfect, you know. There was a lot of there was a lot of talk again, sort of like what I was just telling you guys about that uh, about Teofimo not accept the original deal when Teofimo has been has been chasing a, a Loma for a while already. He's been chasing my pressers, you know. He doesn't want to stay in the same hotel, so it's just been he's just been a nag to 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 Loma. And I I get it. He's a young guy. He wants to get the, the he wants to get the bull, and he got the bull, but. One thing about this kid is, is is one thing about the fight itself is, is like, do we really the the how can I say this? I think the favorite or the favorite should be Lomachenko. Um, do we think Teofimo could win? Absolutely. Are we gonna give him shit if he does? Fuck no. These are the type of fights that make that make men. These are the type of fights. When a, when a, a kid as as young as Teofimo is going after a, a seasoned uh, amateur like like Vasily is, because I mean that's that's essentially I mean he's a little older and he's maybe has about the same fights now as as, as Teofimo uh, professionally, but I mean that's how Loma made his career and he's a, he's an absolutely beautiful fighter and if he's able to somehow some way. Be the guy like Loma, he gets all the credit in the world from, from me, from, from everybody. Everybody should, because I don't think everybody's picking deal to, to clearly win this one. Um, I haven't seen enough of him. I think he's, 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 he's strong enough. I think he he uh, smart enough. But, again, you just don't know. Uh, 
Uh, especially where's a guy like Loma that could make somebody, if you're not ready for a guy like Loma, he's really going to make you look stupid. But, again, do I love this fight? Absolutely. I think I think uh, Teofimo is the best of his class. Uh, by his class, I mean the David Haney's, the... the the Ryan Garcia's, the 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 all that little era that that, that uh, of, of of fighters that that came about in about that around that weight class at 135. So yes, I, I'm I'm really excited about it. I think this is a fighter that this is the this is the type of fight that if the fight if if whoever loses, I I I wouldn't hold that loss against them. You know, it's one of those fights that, that I, and like I said, I'm a, as a boxing fan for so long, I'm really, really excited about. This is the type of fight that I'm going to be nagging. If I if we were still working, if we were still in the office, this is the type of fight that you talk about, that you, that you get those casual fans excited about. Because you know it's going to be a fun fight. Yes, it's going to be technical, but it's going to be a great, great fun fight. This is what I want for boxing. This is maybe where I've been on. This is probably... One of those fights that gets me out of my rut, out of my rut. You know, I, I'm just I just feel like there's nothing that that's why something I kind of stop with the podcasting because there's nothing out there. Everything's negative, and even when I talk to my friends, they're like, "Oh, all you talk about is bad stuff on the podcast." I'm like, "Well, there's nothing to fucking be exciting. There's nothing that that's exciting." I, I'm tired of talking about fights that could be or can happen, and they don't. Some of the biggest stars in boxing are out there, and, and they're not fighting. This fight actually does that for me. It gets me excited. I really want to see it. And and honestly, I, I can't wait. Um, and I can't wait because Mexican boxing isn't doing shit. Uh, you guys know I've always been pro-Mexican boxing. I'm pro when it comes to my personal stuff. I'm pro boxing in general. But, I, you know, just like anybody else, you know, I'm, I'm a Mexican-American guy. I love Mexican-American fighters. I like Mexican fighters. I like fighters that look like me, and, and, and I've always been pro the Mexican fighter, but I, they're not doing shit for me. Do you see me rooting for a Ukrainian in a, in a, in a, in a Salvi or Honduran, whatever the different way is, because he's a great fucking fighter, because the Mexican fighters are just not doing it. You get guys like Andy Reeves that, that get offered eliminators, and like, well, what do you have? As a matter of fact, that's one of my, that's one of my notes of today. And that's the no mames joke of the week uh, about between Andy Reese Jr. is being discussed versus Chris Ariola. What type of shit is that? Where's the where's the catch to this? Where's the catch to that they're both fucking Mexican? That they're both fucking fat? You can see this shit at any t- any. You can see one of these fights at one of my tailgates. Two fucking fat guys beating the shit out of each other. One guy Ariola. It's probably worse legs than fucking I do. What is the what? What is the the? What's the glory on on on, on, on Andy Ruiz? When we know Andy Ruiz is a really a monster. The minute he touches Ariola's chin, he's gonna hurt him bad. And I, I'm a big fan of Ariola, so I, that's not the type of fight. That's not the competitive type of fights that that I want to see. Um. You see, uh, and here's the thing with PBC and, and, and all of boxing for, for, for that matters. All, all these entities, they give us maybe about four fights a year that are good. And the rest are shit fights. Good fighters, great fighters, because PBC and, and their friends have great fighters. Shit matchups. And that goes for everybody, because I don't want to play like, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of this promoter only and, and not of the other. So, the that that fight really is, is fucking makes me cringe. Uh, speaking of cringing, uh, Garcia Campbell supposed to be uh, completed already. Uh, supposedly, um, I, I thought I was gonna have a little more fun with it because I, 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 you know, did a couple of notes. I'm like, okay, she, I, this is the scenario. And I'll tell you guys straight out. I've been wrong about all of this. I said. Uh, just to, to to troll Ryan, I think Gold, Ryan is their goofy as a, a lawyer um, for Ryan. I thought Golden Boy was gonna let this shit go to purse bed because Ryan's not accepting what but the offer that they had. Um, apparently, you know everybody's amicable and, and everybody's friendly with each other between Ryan and and, and, uh, and Oscar. So now I think the fight's getting made. What I was hoping for is that it would a purse bed that Golden Boy. Uh, lagged on the purse bid and let um, 
let old Sir Eddie Hearn uh, take the fight to England and put and he put that shit sometime at two in the morning. That way, you know, Ryan Garcia and, and friends could have watched shit. But I, I think the complete opposite is going to happen. I think the zone wants to fight. I think uh, Golden Boy holds the fight somewhere here in L.A. Um, and, you know, it, it all goes to hell. So it shows you that you should never pick a side with a promoter. Uh, the promoters and their fighters, if you if you vouch for the promoter or you vouch for the fighter, they somehow... Some way they're gonna end up back together, and, and this is this is what's happening <laughs> with the uh, Golden Boy and 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 and, uh, and one of their stars, which is Ryan Garcia. Uh, but as far as that fight, who wins? I don't know, man. Look, Campbell's been beat up by everybody already. Uh, I mean, it's it's no secret that you know shot Pinatas, you know, beat his ass. Uh, the Loma whooped him. So I don't see how a fighter. Um, that has been utterly beaten by 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 two good fighters, and 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 if Ryan somehow was able to pull it off, which he should, you know, he's he's a good kid, you know, he has lightning speed. Um, how was it? Uh, because they're acting like this fight somehow is, is is one of those against all odds. No, you're supposed to beat a fucking guy like Campbell. So fucking what? But anyways, that's that. Um, let's see what else we got. Whoa, well we don't, we still don't have any, any, any information of of, of Canelo. And, and here's why. That's another thing where I was saying, you know, where where's all my Mexican fighters at? Here, here, here we thought that Mexican fighters had uh, control boxing, and, and you know, I guess you could say Mexican fighters or boxing. Goes to the beat of whatever Mexican fighters wanted, and it was, and it seemed like it to a certain point. But it's it's it seems like where are these guys where we need them the most? Guys, let, let's be honest. Let, let let me just open my heart here. We're going through a freaking pandemic. A lot of us are stuck at home. There's nothing much to do. There's fighters out there that that, and again, let, let, let's let's be honest. Boxing is is a. Uh, it's a gateway out of your house right now. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm working from home. Um, I, I thank God I still have a job. Uh, but there's nothing much that, that you know to do, you know, but watch boxing. And, and if you're a sports fan, you, know, you watch basketball or whatever the hell else is out there. But there's nothing really much to do, you know, besides watch Netflix and, and occasional fight. But at the same time, I don't like to be fed shit. You know, we, we've been seeing all these fights that, that are fine. You know, they're fine on the local level. And I know ESPN is trying really hard to put in good fights, but they're really club fights that are fine if you're at a club because you get access to these fighters and you get to go and watch them live. And those fights are, are great, but we're not getting any good fights. But like a guy, like again, and, and I'm sorry because I'm kind of going in circles now, but we have fighters that are not fighting because the money isn't good. We have the Crawfords that are not fighting because the money isn't good. We have guys like Canelo that are not fighting because the money isn't good. So guys like Golovkin that are not fighting because the money isn't great. So what the fuck are we... I mean, this is where we most need our fucking heroes. This is where we more mostly need our, our, our boxers. You know, this is... I think a lot of of, of boxing fans have, have spent their hard-earned money on going to see these fighters, or you know, a rally for them. Um, and and the fact that these guys, when when there's millions and millions of Americans, and and, and not, and I'm just saying this here nationally, or uh, and I'm sure it goes on all over the world because I know I know I got a lot of people that follow me outside of uh, the U.S. But when when there's nothing to watch but fucking Netflix, you expect your, your your fighters to actually fight a fight and not just fight on Twitter. This shit is getting old. We need these guys to fight each other. We need Canelos, the Canelos of the world, uh, the, to fight legitimate fighters too. Because I don't want to see Canelo uh, versus an overwhelmed guy. I don't want to see a Canelo versus a Quigley I don't want to see a Canelo versus a David Lemieux. I want to see a fucking fight. Is that too much to ask from the boxing gods here? 
it's time for boxing to step up. Take care of your fans. Right now, through these pandemics, this is where we need you guys. Hopefully, hopefully we get a good fight soon. All right, guys. With that said, I'm out of here. Thank you guys so much. And I uh, really appreciate you guys. I'll try to make another one. I know I always promise this, but I'll try to make another uh, podcast uh, sometime during the week. Um, I wanted to do a little short ones. You guys tell me if you guys want, you know, a little 10-minute ones. I know this is going to run about maybe 30 minutes. I, I can do quick ones as soon as there's information ready just to keep you guys on your toes with information that I see come about. If you guys want that, please let me know. I'm all ears. I'm here. I listen to you guys. I read you guys' DMs. Uh, I try to respond to each and every one of you guys. Um, again, I have all the time in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here at my desk. Uh, I, I, shit, I work from home now, so why not? All right, guys. Again, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been the Mr. Boxing Guru Podcast. And thank you guys, and see you soon. Bye-bye. I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You broke my back is broken. What a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. Shit. I wish I was 50 years younger and I'd kick your ass. Yeah, big shout out to everybody with the song. And um, as a kid, I always wanted to meet Don King. But now I think Don King's a fucking asshole. He's a racist. No, 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 no. We're not going down that road. Not bigger than this. Maybe the biggest upset of this decade. Decade. Let me just tell you, it's a fat dude. Okay.